21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyons. What's the matter with him? Who told you to call? The policeman there? Well, did he say definitely the man was shot? Yeah. So you are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, the nerve center. The call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. Okay, go back there. Tell the officer I'm sending a car right over there. And the ambulance. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You tell him that. Okay, yeah. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their prisons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st. 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Cronin, Vincent P. Cronin. I am captain in command of the 21st Precinct. I had been off duty since 6 p.m. when I had signed the blotter and left the station house, not scheduled to report until 4 the following afternoon. My wife had been visiting her sister in Teaneck, New Jersey, during the day, and when I came out of the station house, she was waiting for me. We drove to downtown Brooklyn for dinner, to a restaurant I had patronized frequently when I was attached to the 17th Division before being transferred to command of the 21st. After dinner, we went to a movie on Flatbush Avenue. It was after midnight when we came out. We got in our car, drove to Belt Parkway, which runs along the shore past Coney Island, Sheepshead Bay, Floyd Bennett Field, into Queens near the International Airport. I drove off the parkway at Ozone Park and through the quiet streets to our home. My wife got out, of, out in the driveway and went in the front door. I continued into the garage. It's nearly 1 a.m. Peggy fell asleep on the couch. I screwed her up to bed. And watching television? No, studying. Reading economics. Oh, well, that's understandable. Hmm. You want me to put up some coffee? No, 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 thanks, honey. I'm kind of beat. I don't think I can wait for coffee. I'll just have a glass of milk with the sink. All right. No, no, look, never mind. I'll get it. Did Johnny get to sleep all right? Yes. Peggy said he went up at 9 o'clock and no complaints. That's good. The kids been staying up entirely too late. No wonder you can't get him up to school in the morning, huh? He doesn't get half enough sleep. You want a piece of cake? No. No, thanks. I don't think so. Oh, I'm glad to get some sleep myself. It's been a rough day. I'm sorry about the movie. I didn't realize we'd have to sit all through the other picture to see the beginning of the main picture. No, it's all right. I enjoyed it. What kind of cake is that? Layer. Chocolate. Hmm? Want a piece? No, no. I just want to get to bed. Is uh, the white inside? Mm-hmm. It's very good. Well, all right. All right just a, a little piece. Sure. Not, not too much now. Oh, no. Now get it. Hello? Captain Cronin? Yes. Sergeant Lyons on TF, Captain. Yes, Sergeant. We had a bad homicide. Oh, yes? Man found shot and killed in the parked automobile. He was covered by the patrolman on post at 78th and 1st Avenue at 1248. Oh, who is he? Do you know, Sergeant? No identification yet. Well, what does it look like? A, a ride job? Yeah, it could be. There's a bar and grill open near there and a luncheonette. Nobody heard any shot. Could have been dead in the car when it was parked there. Okay, you send a car out for me. Yes, sir. Right away. Are you going in, Jim? Yeah. Yeah, I got a bad homicide. Oh, that's too bad. I'm so tired. Oh, I'll be all right. Is this small enough? Mm, yeah, it's fine. Uh, Helen. Hmm? Look, on the second thought, maybe coffee wouldn't be such a bad idea. If it's not too much trouble. Oh, it's no trouble, Ben. It's no trouble at all. Okay. While I was en route to the scene, the formalities attending the beginning of a homicide investigation were underway. By the time I arrived, the morgue wagon was there. 
Several patrolmen of the 21st Precinct have been posted to keep the sidewalk and street clear of curious citizens within a circle of 50 feet from the automobile in which the body was found. When I walked through the police lines, I saw Lieutenant King standing on the streetlight talking to several detectives. Now, what I want you to do is I want you two to take a run back to the house. All right, uh, Captain. Hello, Skipper. That's all right. This is the precinct commander, Captain Cronin, Detectives Vaughn and Cooney from Homicide Squad. How are you? Glad to know you, Captain. All right, now, what I was saying is, Cooney, you and Novak run back to the house. I want you to check this fellow's name out down at the ECI in the information unit. See what they come up with. Give them the registration number and description of the car. Find out if it's registered in his name. Now, if it isn't, get the name and address of the owner. See if he's ever had any arrests or convictions, okay? Mm-hmm. All right, get going. Uh, the car's around the corner. All right. Fitz and Vaughn. Yes, sir. I want you to go into the luncheonette over there and all the bars and grills around here. Okay, Lieutenant. Try this one over here first. And what's it look like, man? Well, we don't know much yet. The patrolman on post on slumped over the wheel. The car was parked at the curb. Yeah, I know. He was shot twice, one in the neck and one in the chest. The medical examiner said either might have done it. We'll know more about that when he finishes the autopsy. There wasn't any weapon in the car, was there? No, there wasn't any identification on it. He had a wallet in his pocket. Mm -hmm. There was a social security card in there. He had an operator's license issued to Philip Bardino, age 31, 412 Avenue C. Mm -hmm. You think that's him? Well, the description on the operator's license checks out pretty good. 5'10 and a half, 161 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes. Also, there was a Dunning letter from a credit clothing store and Edison bill in his pocket. Same name, same address. Mm -hmm. Say, listen, Lieutenant King. Yeah, Fitz. I just saw Bender. He rang into the house. This fellow Ardino didn't own the car. No? Belongs to a Joe Norwell, 235 Bank Street, down the village. Is it in the alarms? Been reported stolen? No, sir. Bender said it hadn't been. All right. Tell me what you do. Yeah. Which one of those homicide squad men you're working with? Vaughn. All right, you and Vaughn take a run down to the village. Check out the address. See if you can find the owner of the car and bring him into the house. Okay, Lieutenant, we'll do that. Vaughn, wait a minute, will you? Yeah. Well, maybe that'll give you a start on something, Matt. I hope so, Captain. We've got nothing to get our hooks in yet. Because a murder investigation requires an inordinate amount of manpower, a homicide squad is maintained in each borough to assist the precinct squad detectives. At the beginning of such an investigation, each homicide squad detective assigned to the case teams up with a precinct detective, and they work together until their job is completed. In this case, Detective Fitzpatrick of the 21st Squad and Detective Vaughn of the Manhattan East Homicide Squad were assigned by Lieutenant King to locate the owner of the car in which the body was found. In compliance, they went to 235 Bank Street in Greenwich Village, the address listed by the Motor Vehicle Bureau. They found the building to be a four-story brownstone converted into small flats. They rang the bell of Joe Norwell. There was no answer. At 20 minutes to 3 a.m., they were on the stairs overlooking the door to Joe Norwell's flat, waiting. Well, I'd sure like to jump in someplace for coffee. I'm getting groggy. We better not fit. He's liable to show. Well, what do you say we wait another 15 minutes, then one of us will go down and ring in again and pick up some coffee on the way back, huh? Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. About 15 minutes. Hold it. What? Wait a minute. What? Somebody coming up the stairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right, keep it down. The man. Yeah. That's him. Yep. Watch him. He may be healed. Wait a minute, mister. We want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Me? Yeah. What's your name, Max? Who are you? We're detectives. Oh, yeah? What's your name? Norwell. Joe Norwell. You live here? Yeah, right here. Listen, what's the trouble? What happened? Go ahead. Open up the door. Hey, wait a minute. How do I know you're detectives? How's this? Is this satisfying? Yeah. That satisfies me. Go ahead. Open up the door. What do you want with me? We want to talk to you. All right. Want to talk to me? Come on in. Yeah, thanks. Uh, make yourself at home. Sit down. No, that's all right. You want a beer or something? I got some beer on ice. No, nothing. You want an automobile, Mr. Nolan? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I own an automobile. What kind of a car do you own? Chevy. 1952 Chevy. Do you have the registration for it? Do you have it on you? Yeah, I got it. I got it right here. Can I see it? Yeah, sure, if you want to. Hey, what's the matter? What happened with the car? Where's the car now, Mr. Nolan? Well, I lent it to a friend of mine. What's the matter? Do you have an accident with it or something? Where is it? Did you see the car? Here, put this back in your pocket. Listen, no kidding. Did he have an accident? He didn't wreck it, did he? What's the name of this friend you lent the car to? My friend Phil, Phil Ardino. Where does he live? Over on Avenue C. Listen, you know, that car is my bread and butter. Something happened to it? How good a friend are you of his? 
Oh, we're good friends. We see each other a lot. Oh, what's the matter? What happened? What did he do to the car? He didn't do anything to the car. And he didn't have an accident, huh? Yeah, he had an accident, Mr. Nolan. He got shot. Bill? Yeah. Who shot him? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Well, don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. Well, how is he? Is he in the hospital? He's dead. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. He was found in your car on First Avenue. Well, how do you like that? You know, I knew I shouldn't have let him in the car. I knew it. Turned out to be a pretty bad idea, I'll say that. I'll tell you what, Mr. Norwell. We want you to come to the station house with us. The lieutenant wants to talk to you. About what? About how come he happened to get shot in your car. Well, I lent it to him. Yeah, well, you better come along with us, huh? Maybe we better take a look around here. You don't mind if we take a look around your flat, do you, Mr. Norwell? Well, what are you looking for here? I got nothing you want. If you do, we'll find it. We're the best moving men in the world. Have you got anything on you, Mr. Norwell? Let's see what you got on you. I got nothing on me. Well, we'll see. Oh, come on. What is this? I lend a guy my car, that's all. Is there any law against lending a guy your car? No. But it looks like you picked the wrong night to do it. Sir of a patrol precinct informs the communication bureau that a homicide has occurred. Notification is made immediately to the division office of the borough commander, chief inspector's office, and the district attorney's office, as well as to the technical squads and bureaus whose assistance is required in the investigation. When the body had been taken to the morgue, the center of investigation moved to the 21st detective squad, and the station house became the scene of considerable activity. But by 3.20 a.m., the house was again quiet. I instructed Sergeant Lyons to have a car come by the house and take me to my home. When he informed me that the car was waiting outside, I went around the desk and sat down to sign the block. Okay, Lieutenant. It's all yours. Yes, sir. Sergeant Lyons. Okay, you take your meal now. Where will you be? Where? Yeah, all right. Okay, Sergeant. Good night. Good night, Skipper. Oh, Captain. Yes. Are you swinging tomorrow? No, uh, I'll be here at 3.30. I'll be doing night duty. Yeah. Walk right up to that desk there, Mr. Norwell. We've got the ring upstairs. Okay. Hello, Captain. Good right. night. Good night, Skipper. Can I use this, Sergeant? Yeah, sure. Me, Lieutenant King, huh? Okay, Fritz. Look, I'm telling you, all I did was lend my friend my car. That's all. Yeah, we know all about that, Mr. Norwell. We know you lent it to him. Hello, Lieutenant. Uh, this is Fitz. We're downstairs with the owner of the automobile. Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, look. Right away. I say, Sergeant. He says, come on upstairs with him, boy. That way, Joe. Hey, listen, how long do you think this is going to take? Well, that's up to the lieutenant. All I did was lend the guy my car. That's enough. Upstairs. I mean, I can't help it if he goes out and gets himself shot while he's driving my car, can I? No. Then what do you want from me? Right over that way. Go ahead. Lieutenant, there's the office, nobody? <laughs> yeah, he's in there. Has he got anybody with him? No, no, he's all alone. All right, Joe, come over here and sit down. Yeah. Why don't you sit down right here? Uh, how long? Well, we've just got to talk to the Lieutenant a minute. I'll tell you what, Fitz, I, I better wait out here with him. Yeah, you do that. I'll be right back. Yes? Fitz, Lieutenant. Come in. Got the owner of the car. Oh, that's good. What does he have to say for himself? Well, he admits he lent Ardino his car tonight. Yeah. He had nothing on him, nothing in his room. Well, the victim wasn't exactly an angel, but No? Well, his record down at BCI showed three arrests for burglary and one conviction for unlawful entry. Did some time out in the island. He visited that address down at Avenue C all alone. Apparently no relatives. Apparently he hasn't been working lately. That's all we've been able to come up with so far on him. Superintendent of the building down there says he's only had that flat about six weeks. He doesn't know where he lived before. What about his last address down at BCI? Shows the building on East 104th Street. The building has since been demolished to make way for a housing project. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, bring the owner of the car in here. Let's talk to him. Yes. Vaughn? Yeah. Come on in here with him. How's he look to you? Well, we haven't talked much to him, Lieutenant. All right, go right in there, Mr. Norwell. Yeah, sure. Close the door, Vaughn. Yes, sir. Mr. Norwell, this is Lieutenant King, judge of the squad here. I know you. All right, Mr. Norwell, sit down. Yeah, sure. Now, Mr. Norwell told us, Lieutenant, that he lent Dardino his car last night. 
That same car that I've seen his body was found in. Yeah, that's right. I, I lent it to him. Well, before we get into that, Mr. Norwell, let me find out a few things about you. How old are you? I'm 29. You live at 235 Bank Street? Yeah, that's right. How long has he lived at that address? Oh, well, let me see. Uh, going on two years now. What have you got there? <laughs> what do you mean what I got there? I got a room, a small flat, one room. Mm-hmm. What do you work at, Mr. Norwell? A mechanic. What do you mean, a mechanic? Automobile mechanic? Yeah. Where are you working now? Well, I'm, uh, I'm not working right now. Why not? Well, I hurt my hand on the job, uh, this hand, the right one. Mm. When was that? Oh, about, uh, five, six weeks ago. It's all right now, though, isn't it? Well, it's, uh, it's getting all right. Well, what have you been doing? Drawing workman's compensation? Well, no, it wasn't on that kind of a job. You see, I was... <clears throat> well, a friend of mine had trouble with his car on a Sunday morning. He asked me to fix it, and I was working on it, and a tool slipped, and I hurt my hand. Then you didn't get hurt on a regular job? No. I said I didn't. It was on a Sunday morning. Well, were you working on a regular job at the time? Well, now, let me see, uh... No, no, I wasn't. How have you been maintaining yourself, Mr. Norwell? Well, I've been drawing unemployment. How much have you been drawing? Been getting thirty dollars a week. Thirty dollars a week. How much rent are you paying? Uh, fifty dollars a month. All this time you've been paying rent and eating, driving a car, and dressing pretty nice. You've been getting by on thirty dollars a week. Well, it's a little tight. You ever been arrested, Mr. Norwell? What do you mean arrested? Uh, you mean uh? Like a traffic summer? I mean, arrested for a crime. Oh, no. No, not me. You've never been arrested? No, never. How long have you known Phil Ardino? Well, let me see. Uh, a couple of weeks. Three weeks, maybe. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Let's get back to this other thing a minute. Yeah. Have you ever been arrested for anything? No, I got a traffic ticket once or twice. That's all. I was uh, running a red light. Now, you want to get this thing straightened out, don't you? Oh, sure, I want to get it straightened out. All I did was lend a guy my car. I want to go home and go to bed. All right, Mr. Norwell, why don't you take everything out of your pockets and put it on the desk there? Do I have to? You want to get it straightened out, don't you? Just take everything out of your pockets and put it on the desk. Everything. All right, all right. <coughs> and pack a cigarette. Okay. And I got some matches. And a handkerchief. I got this case here that's got a comb and a nail file in it. And I got the keys to my flat. Oh, yeah, and I got a little change here. And I got my wallet. Got any money in the wallet? Yeah, I got a little bit. And I take the money out of the wallet and count it. Well, okay, I'd be delighted, but listen. Before you do that, what else have you got in the wallet? Well, I got the ownership for my car and my driver's license. Got a couple of telephone numbers and uh, a couple of business cards. Let me see those business cards. Yeah, sure. What are you handing us, Joe? What do you mean, what am I handing you? You're sitting there telling us you've never been arrested and you got the card of a lawyer and two bail bondsmen in your wallet. I know this lawyer handles nothing but criminal cases. You've never been arrested. What do you need the card from bail bondsmen for? Now, you don't want to tell us the truth. Have you ever been arrested? Nope. I've never been arrested. Vaughn, well, I think this guy is handing us a line. Go outside, will you? Call the BCI and the information unit. Let him check out his name and address. See what they come up with on it. Okay, Lieutenant. They're not going to come up with nothing. We'll see. We'll see. What could they come up with? All right, Joe. How much money have you got there? You mean you want me to count it? Yeah, I'll count it. Well, I could give you a rough idea without counting it. Count it. All right, all right. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 82. 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52, 53. $253. Yeah, that's right. $253. That's more than a little bit. All right. Put the money back in your wallet and put it in your pocket. Okay. Where'd you get that money? Oh, what do you mean, where'd I get it? It's mine. You said you hadn't worked in a couple of months. You said you'd been drawing unemployment. You've got a car. You're maintaining yourself. Now, where would you get $253 in cash if you haven't worked? Listen, uh, you want to know the truth? That's what we're here for. All right, I'll tell you the truth. You won't, if you just won't let it go any further. I won that in a crap game down in the village. Now, that's the truth. That's the honest-to-goodness truth. I mean, I had a lucky streak. I made seven passes in a row. Give me the name of one of the players in that crap game. Oh, well, you we'll never... We'll get into that later, Fitz. Now, you said you've known Phil Ardino for two or three weeks. Yeah, but... When did you see him last? Well, uh, tonight. You mean last night? It's after three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah, last night. What time last night? About seven, eight o'clock, I guess. Where was this? 
In a bar over there, right near my house. What's the name of the bar? Bonley's. How do you spell that? D-O-N-L-E-E-S. Where is it? On Bank Street? Yeah, it's right down on the corner from where I live. How did you happen to meet Ardino there? Oh, I saw him in the afternoon. He said, what are you doing tonight? And I said, nothing. And he said, uh, would you like to have a drink tonight? And I said, yeah. And we made up to meet in Bonley. Who got there first, you or him? Well, I did. I live right near there. He lives all the way over on Avenue C. What time did he get there? A few minutes later, before 8 o'clock. And the two of you sat there drinking? Yeah, that's right. What'd you drink? Well, personally, I was drinking beer. He was uh, having whiskey. How long were you there together? Oh, well, we must have stayed till 9.30, 10 o'clock, something like that. Did you see anyone in there you knew? Anyone that could say that you two were in there together? No, nobody, unless somebody that I didn't see saw me. You stayed in there until 9.30, quarter to 10. Yeah, something like that. Did you leave together? Well, to tell you the fact of the business is we uh, walked out together, but we didn't stay together. Why not? Well, because when we were in there, Phil says he's got to meet somebody uptown. He asked me, could he borrow my car? And I said, well, what's the matter? You want to borrow my car when you got one of your own? Well, he said he stood around there too long, and he was late to meet a guy uptown. He didn't want to go all the way over to Avenue C to get his own car to drive up. And you agreed to lend him your car? Well, yeah, he was a nice fellow. I wanted to save him the trouble. Who was he going to meet uptown? Well, I don't know. Some fella. He, he didn't tell me. Where uptown? He didn't tell me that either. He just said uptown. And you left the bar together? Yeah. Yeah, I took him over to my car to show him where it was. He, he didn't know where it was parked. I had to show him that. And then what happened? Well, he got in my car and he drove away. Did he say he'd bring it back? He said he'd bring it back about midnight and he'd uh, leave the keys in my mailbox. Um, that is, if I wasn't home. You had no idea where he went or who he was going to see? No, I swear, no idea. Did the CI come up with anything on him, Vaughn? Yeah, they came up with something on him, Lieutenant. Why? Why? What did they come up with? Don't you know what being arrested means? He did some big time, Lieutenant. Oh, he did? For what? Burglary. He did two years and eight months on a two and a half to five in Sing Sing. Is that right, Joe? If it's right, it's right. What can I do? You've been lying to us about everything, haven't you, Joe? Where were you between 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning? You weren't home. We were there waiting for you. Well, I was out. I was out drinking. Who were you with? Were you with anyone? Well, I was in bars. You know, I was making the rounds. Now, the fact of the matter is, when you left that bar on Bank Street, you got in the car with Argino. Isn't that right? No, it's not right. If you were out for five hours, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning, you must have seen someone you know. Give the lieutenant the name of one person you saw. I didn't see anyone I knew. Now, isn't that possible? Now, look, Joe, I know you shot him. I did now, not. All I want to know is why and where the gun is. I didn't shoot now, him. don't hand me that. You're a couple of good thieves. You got into a fight over the $250 you have in your wallet. Isn't that right? No. No, I'm telling you, I swear. Now, look, Joe, you're either going to help us or you're not. Where's the gun? That's the first thing we want to know. Now, you listen to me, Joe. I know exactly what happened. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to put you into this thing. I'm going to put you into it good. So you make up your mind whether you're going to help me or you aren't. Vaughn. Yes, sir. You must have thrown that gun someplace in the neighborhood. Tell the desk officer I want to make a complete search within five blocks in every direction. Get as many patrolmen as you can in the emergency squad and the Department of Sanitation on the job. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. There's something else I want. All right, I want... all right. Well, you're going to scratch around. You're going to get it anyway, aren't you? Yeah, you can count on it. Look, he came at me. I had to do it. All right. Just start at the beginning. Well, we decided to do some work together after we left the bar and we came uptown in my car. And I knew this building over on 74th Street. I knew there was some nice flats up in there so we went in and we finally found one that we could make and we we got inside the you and Phil together yeah yeah that's right the two of us together and we scratched around the joint I don't know all I found was a gun and you know, a pistol you know this lady had a couple of lousy rings and a jewelry box and some earrings well I was looking out of the corner of my eye at Phil and I saw him going in the desk and slipping something in his pocket and I figured this guy's made some cash, you know? So I didn't say nothing until we got back down in the car. And we were both commiserating with each other about what a lousy touch it is. We decided to stop the car and get a drink. So when we parked, I decided to spring it on him. I said, uh, come on, come on, let's have that cash you put in your pocket. And he said, uh, oh, what cash? So one thing led to another, and he came at me, and I used the gun on him. 
I mean, what else could I do? He really came at me when I said, let's see what you got in your pocket there. He was mad. I was just protecting myself, that's all. I mean, there I was. He was in my car, shot twice. What could I do? I had to get out, that's all. Do the best I could for myself. Yeah. Where did you throw the gun? Around there, someplace in the trash basket when I was walking to the subway. All right, Fitz, take him out, see if you can find the gun. Meantime, we'll get the district attorney up here. Okay, Lieutenant. Come on, Joe. Let's go. Don't know back to call the DA's office. Okay, Lieutenant. Close the door, will you? Okay, Lieutenant. 21st Squad, Lieutenant King. That's Captain Conan, man. So, oh, hello, Captain. I just got home. I was wondering how you were doing with that homicide. It's all cleaned up, Captain. It is? That's pretty fast work, Matt. Yes, sir. The boy that did it was a pretty fast talker. He talked himself right into it. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Lyon. A what? Well, how do you know something's wrong? And so it goes. How many days? Huh? Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's greatest city is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, city of New York. James Gregory in the role of Captain Cronin and Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Wendell Holmes, Ethel Everett, Bill Zuckert, John McQuaid, William Redfield, and Bill Quinn. 21st Precinct is written, produced, and directed by Stanley Niss. Art Hannah speaking.